Ranger School is one of the most difficult and demanding leadership schools in the world. Let's see how hard it is by discussing requirements, timeline and phases, standards and significant emotional events, sleep and food deprivation, mail, peer evaluations, harassment, and ultimately what you learn at Ranger School. Because of training to exhaustion, pushing the limits of your mind and body, every ranger I know has a love-hate relationship with ranger school. We hated the school and going through it, but we love what it taught us about our lives and ourselves. I can't recommend this leadership school enough. Let's start with requirements. Most ranger students don't just show up cold to ranger school. They come from a ranger battalion where they have proven to their NCOs that they are ready for the course. Or they just finished a training pipeline like the infantry officer's basic course or the special forces qualification course and have a company commander validation of ranger course prerequisites. But for everyone else, they usually get a ranger school slot after a very difficult competition at their home station. And then they are sent to a pre-ranger course and these competitions and pre-rangers are notoriously hard and further add to your muscular and mental fatigue. Ranger school is broken into three phases, binning phase, mountains, and Florida or swamp phase. During the binning phase, students are required to pass several no-fail screening events, get some initial training, and then focus on squad level patrolling. The first screening event during Ranger Assessment Phase, or RAP, is a fitness test. Ranger students have to do 49 perfect form push-ups, 59 perfect form sit-ups, and six chin-ups. Then you do a five mile run in 40 minutes. I'm not sure how it is now, but I did my five mile run at three in the morning after a full day of combatives training and getting smoked. This was such a significant emotional event for me that my second ever Life as a Special Operation video was about preparing for Ranger School and this event was my point of emphasis. Ranger students also have to do a combat water survivability assessment. Then you run the Malvesti confidence course. This is an easy obstacle course, but I was a winter ranger and so I just remember the water being freezing cold and super nasty. Students also must pass a day and night land navigation test, a two mile buddy run in combat gear, and a day at Victory Pond where you get to do a fun slide for life and a high rope drop. Rangers negotiate the Darby Queen obstacle course, which is one mile long, complete a week of combatives training, and a long ruck march out to the field training site. They don't tell you how long it is, but I suspect it was about 12 miles. Once you're at the field training site, you focus on learning and doing troop leading procedures, battle drills, and squad level patrols. If you pass this phase, you are given a six hour pass to go into Columbus, Georgia to refit before moving out to mountains. A ranger buddy of mine was living in the Fort Benning area and so his wife picked us up with a bag of cheeseburgers and french fries. She drove us to Ranger Joe's to buy needed gear for mountains. Like a total amateur, I blew out one of my boots during bending phase, so I had to get some new ones. This meant I had to break in these boots during mountain phase, something I highly discourage. We then went back to their apartment where I took a four hour nap while she did our laundry. Then she woke us up with more cheeseburgers and fries and then drove us back to ranger school. I will never forget the kindness Mrs. Peterson showed us. Thank you so much. Upon returning to ranger school, we all got smoked, something fierce, and then we loaded a bus and drove to Dahlonega, Georgia for mountain phase. I specifically remember being warned by several recent graduates to include my cousin not to get put into Bravo Company during mountains 
and for sure to stay clear of a ranger instructor, or R.I., who for the sake of anonymity, I'm going to call Staff Sergeant V. My name was the first name they yelled when we got off the bus. And of course, I was instantly introduced to Staff Sergeant V, who welcomed me to Bravo Company. He then let me know that as the senior student in the course, I was going to be the garrison student leader. We then did a full gear layout in the freezing rain to ensure that our packing lists were complete. Within a minute, everything we owned and needed to use for the next few weeks was soaking wet. Welcome to the mountains. The first few days of mountains is dedicated to military mountaineering and getting smoked. You learn knots, belays, anchor points, rope management, and the basic fundamentals of climbing and rappelling. And you learn how to move heavy military equipment in rugged terrain. And then we had a few days of mountaineering in some of the most miserably cold and stormy weather of my life. And then we did platoon-sized patrols focused on ambushes and raids. I'm going to say the mountain phase of ranger school was really great training, but man did it suck. Misery on every level. Sergeant V ended up being a bigger jerk than I expected, but compared to my small group instructor at the Special Forces Qualification Course, he was a Girl Scout. The last thing I remember about mountains was Sergeant V, JMPI in my gear, whispering something personal but motivating into my ear, and then loading all of us onto a C-130 to jump into Florida. Florida was a few days of jungle-specific training followed by a 10-day patrol. I remember the training being first class, specifically a jungle reptile familiarity course, which included wrapping some duct tape around the mouth of an alligator and letting him walk around the classroom to scare us all out of falling asleep. We also got some survival, resistance, evasion, and escape training. The 10-day patrol was very difficult. Days were long. Movements were slow and wet. We did a platoon air assault and some river crossings and boat movements. Although we were working together much better as a platoon, we were all just so mentally and physically drained. After passing Florida, we were taken back to Fort Benning for a final day of outprocessing and graduation. The Rangers in Action display at the graduation ceremony is very impressive and memorable. Let's move on to significant emotional events. We always joke that the most important rule of Ranger School is don't quit. But there are plenty of people who have been kicked out for not passing a required event. These required events include, but are not limited to, the fitness test, the combat water survivability assessment, a five mile run, the two mile buddy run, water training, completing obstacle courses, showing aggressiveness, getting a go for a leadership position in a patrol at every phase, this is why there is historically a 31 to 44% pass rate for Ranger School. In Garrison, you will eat three meals a day, sometimes MREs, sometimes at the dining facility, but usually a mixture of both, but always under pressure and time stress. Rangers recite the Ranger Creed and then do five chin-ups before running into the dining facility. If you are lucky, you will eat your meal in the dining facility in four minutes. But sometimes the RIs are in a bad mood and you get 40 seconds to run through the chow hall. It was during these moments when I would put butter on bread and pour sugar on it, fold it in half and jam it in my mouth. I would try to maximize every possible calorie before I walked out of the dining facility, angry at life and disgusted with the cadre. I actually ate much better in the field on patrols. When I went through ranger school, we were given two MREs a day. This was way more calories than in garrison, but still, it was never enough. Every person I know loses weight at ranger school. This is because you are in a caloric deficit every single day of ranger school. I started ranger school in great shape and weighing 180 pounds. I lost 20 pounds at ranger school and graduated at my fighting weight, 160. Yes. The calorie deprivation is miserable, but this school teaches you that security is rule number one, priority number one, 
and that food can wait until secure conditions are reached. Every minute of ranger school is programmed. When you are in garrison, you will train and train hard 20 hours a day. I'm sure there were days where I got more than four hours of sleep, but looking back, I honestly don't remember any. When you are in the field, you will patrol 24 hours a day in accordance with the tactical situation. Sometimes you have good leaders who get you to the patrol base quickly and you are able to pull 50% security for three or four hours before conducting a mission. This means that you could get an hour and a half or two hours of sleep. But there are many days when you have bad leaders and you will literally walk all day long and never have time to eat or to get any sleep before executing the mission. I'm convinced that sleep deprivation is significantly worse than food deprivation. And yes, the sleep deprivation was miserable, but this school teaches you that security is rule number one, priority number one, and that sleep can wait until secure conditions are reached. At the end of each phase of training, you will have a one hour mail call. Some rangers got letters from family and loved ones. This was uplifting and encouraging. Others got some Dear John letters and had their girlfriends break up with him. This was a source of ruthless joking amongst the students and a real kick in the stomach. But most rangers have their friends and family send care packages full of junk food. I remember at the end of Benning phase eating some of Ariel's Reese's, canned coffee from Peterson, chocolate zingers from Ski, Twinkies from Matt's family, and some pralines from my ranger buddy Joe. It was absolutely glorious up until the R.I. collected back all of the leftover junk food and then took us for a run and smoked us. At Mountains, I got a care package from my Special Forces buddy Max, who went through Ranger School a few years earlier. The package was full of contraband, and so my platoon got smoked and I got destroyed by the entire R.I. staff to include the company commander. Thanks, Max. My recommendation is this. Don't eat yourself sick with your care packages. Have someone send you some immune boosters and five or six of your favorite candy bars. After each phase, rangers are required to write peer evaluations. This is where you write down who are the strongest and most helpful members of your squad and platoon, but you also get to write down who are the weakest members of your squad and platoon. I remember peering out a few people, but to be honest, these guys were jerks. It wasn't that they weren't good at react to contact or couldn't set up a crew served weapon. It was because they were selfish and always put themselves ahead of the team. For the most part, those who didn't finish ranger school because of being peered out deserved it. Lesson learned, be a team player from day one and your team will value you and be stronger for it all the way until graduation. No matter how many stories you hear about ranger school, nothing really prepares you for the harassment. Thankfully, I went to ranger school two weeks after finishing SEER school. So I often said to myself, well, at least the RIs don't beat and torture me. But even then, it really fires you up when their meanness and harassment never relent. Enduring this hardship is what builds mental toughness, one of the all-time most important mindsets of a champion and the true legacy of Army Rangers. If you are interested in developing the champion mindset of the best trained and most elite forces in the world, then check out Special Operations Mindset. Ebook, paperback, audiobook, or take the course with five hours of original content. I'll leave a hyperlink in the description and use the discount code Rangers Lead the Way, one word, all caps, to get 50% off the course. Let's finish up by discussing what you learn at Ranger School. Of course, you learn how to do squad and platoon level patrols, ambushes, raids, and a defense. But more importantly, you learn that security is rule number one and that it comes before eating and sleeping. 
you learn about digging deep and giving everything you have for the good of the team. You learn mental and physical toughness and that you're much more capable than you ever imagined. Okay, there you have it. An executive summary of Ranger School. Let me know what I missed or what has changed in the comments below. Looking back on all my training, I was glad I went to Ranger School and I highly recommend it to any future leader. Please like and subscribe if you want to join my Life as a Special Operation team. And don't forget to forward this video to a friend who needs to see this. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?